Back in episode 112, I did a review of the Aragon 8008 power amplifier, which was rated at 200 watts per channel into 8 ohm loads. In this episode, I'm going to review its little brother, the Aragon 2004 Mark II power amplifier, which is rated at 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms at not more than 0.05% THD. Between 1990 and 1994, this guy sold for about $1,400 or about $3,200 in 2025 US dollars. There were not very many specifications other than the power and THD, and there's one for the SNR input sensitivity, and that's about it. So there wasn't one for frequency response or anything like that. Now it did say into four ohm loads, it should be able to double the power or put out 200 watts into four ohm loads at not more than 0.05% THD as well. So as with most of my videos, we'll do a little tour. We'll look at the front. All there is really is the on off switch. Then we'll look around back, not a lot more going on, but at least you can see what it looks like. And then I'll remove the cover and you can see what it looks like. It's pretty much the same as the 8008 as far as the inputs and outputs and that kind of stuff. And then I will present the data that I measured on the bench. And then finally, I will tell you what I thought after listening to the 2004 Mark II. Here is a close-up view of the front of the Aragon 2004. Obviously, we have their trademark V-notch here. Just a power on-off switch and a green LED complement the front. This obviously is the rear of the 2004 Mark II. We have a user-replaceable fuse here. Our AC power cord input obviously is there. We have our three-way binding post for the speakers here and here, and of gold-plated RCA input jacks here. What's interesting is that they have the text for everything here kind of labeled uh, so that when you look at it from straight on like we're looking at it for now, you can read it or if you were looking at it from the front looking down on it, you could read the text as to which is which. Once you remove the cover of the 2004 Mark II, this is what you are greeted with. You can see a large toroidal a transformer there. You can't see it uh, greatly, but you can kind of see it right here. And then there's another one here. And then there's another one here and another one here. There are the four uh, 95 volt, I believe 10,000 or 12,000 microfarad capacitors. We have bridge rectifiers for each of the plus and minus rails for each of the channels. It is a true dual mono design with the uh, transformer having separate windings for each of the uh, power supplies for each of the channels and you can kind of see some of the output uh, transistors uh, here and here and, and then there's some on the other side and this just shows another close-up view of the innards of the 2004 mark ii here we have the aragon putting out about five watts into eight ohm loads at one kilohertz you can see that our THDs are better than 0.08%, we'll call it. SNRs are above 82 dB. The right channel is a little bit better. However, the right channel's THD plus noise is about, what, 12, 13 dB worse than the left channel's. And you can see right here that the uh, first harmonic and second harmonic and so on is higher for the right channel than the left channel. That's why it's worse. You can also see that our gains are around oh, 25.2 dB or so, and they're both pretty well balanced. Right now, I've got the 2004 Mark II connected to four ohm loads, and we're putting about five watts into those loads at one kilohertz. Our THD remains about the same as it did when we were connected to eight ohm loads. SNR dropped a little bit, which is expected, as did the THD plus noise. Here is the 2004 Mark II's frequency response from 20 hertz to 40 kilohertz. There is no specification for it. And if you just go to 20 kilohertz, we're down, oh, maybe a quarter of a dB, it looks like. And at 40 kilohertz, we're down about nine tenths of a dB. So that's its frequency response. And this is with it putting out about five watts into eight ohm loads. 
And here is our frequency response from 20 hertz to 40 kilohertz. Once again, there is no specification for the frequency response, and we're putting out about 5 watts into 4 ohm loads. It pretty much looks the same as it did into 8 ohm loads. It's down a bit more here at 40 kilohertz, but at 20 kilohertz, we're down, I think, 3 tenths of a dB, and we were down maybe a quarter of a dB into 8 ohm loads. Here we have the 2004 Mark II putting out its rated 100 watts, actually slightly more than 100 watts into 8 ohm loads. And you can see it's better than 0.05%, which is the THD specification limit. So it's doing pretty good there. There were no specs on SNRs, and they're above, we'll say, 83 dB. THD plus noise, ah, minus 67 dB. Right now, I've connected to 4 ohm loads, and we're trying to find out if we can hit our 200 watts into 4 ohm loads at less than 0.05% THD. Well, we're at 175 watts, and we're just a little bit beyond the 0.05%. Nothing wrong with 0.08%, we'll call it. SNR is around 78 THD plus noise, minus 62 dB. So it doesn't look too bad. I can go up a little bit more before we start getting into some uh, THD distortion trouble, and we're going to be six tenths of seven tenths of a percent here at about 195 watts. So we're pretty close to the one percent limit, I guess, is the new specification for how much uh, your power can be at one percent. So, you know, we're very close to that right now, but our SNR looks not very good. Here is the Aragon's output impedance slash damping factor from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The thicker traces, the purple one and the red one, are the damping factor. And the worst case damping factor, of course, is at the high end of the band, and we're at about, oh, 45, 46. There is no specification for the damping factor, but it's around, worst case, about 46, let's call it. Here is the 2004 MK2's THD versus frequency for several different output power levels into 8 ohms. And this would be from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, of course. The output powers range from 1 watt to 90 watts. The specification is that the THD should be better than 0.05%, which would be somewhere down here. So we're not quite meeting that requirement, but at worst case, we're maybe 0.3% oh, at 20 kilohertz. Here is the MK2's output power versus THD, and this is taken at 1 kilohertz and into 8 ohm loads. So the input power starts off such that it's 1 watt output, and then it goes up to 110 watts. So at 110 watts, we're a bit over 1% THD. But at 100 watts, we're better than, let's say, 0.08 THD. And remember, the specification is that it should be better than 0.05 percent THD. Here is the system noise of the Aragon 2004 MK2 power amplifier. In this case, both inputs are terminated to shorts, and we're looking into 8 ohm loads. It is around, we'll say, minus 73 dB, which is predominantly due to these uh, power supply spikes here. There is no specification for this. It's just here for your enjoyment. Here is the 2004 MK2's crosstalk with the active channel putting out 5 watts into an 8 ohm load. And this would be, of course, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Once again, there is no specification, but it is better than, let's say, 47 dB, and that's at the high end of the band. Here is the Aragon's multi-tone response with it putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohm loads. And this translates to a distortion-free range of about 12 bits. Here is the 2004 Mark II's IMD response with 19 and 20 kilohertz tones. And it's looking about like right here at about minus 65, we'll call it, is going to be the uh, worst case, which gives a distortion-free range of about, oh, we'll call it 11 bits. Right now, we're looking at the difference in phase between a signal going into the 2004 Mark II and one that's coming out of it, and it's connected to uh, an 8 ohm load, or actually both channels are connected to 8 ohm loads, but I'm just showing the left channel in this case, and at 1 kilohertz, there is no difference in phase. 
at 10 kilohertz, you see a little bit of phase difference. This is just a couple of degrees of phase difference between the input and the output. And at 100 hertz, we're about, oh, a couple degrees also of phase difference between the input and the output signals. Here we have the difference in phase between the left and right channels. And once again, they're both connected to 8 ohm loads, and they both have the same signal going into them. And this is at 10 kilohertz. There is no difference in phase between the left and right channels. And at 1 kilohertz, once again, there is no difference in phase. And at 100 hertz, there is, once again, no difference in phase between the left and right channels. This shows the rise time of the 2004 Mark II, and we're seeing a rise time of about 3.14 microseconds. There is no specification for it. So the slew rate would be calculated between this point here and this point here, which is a 6-volt change, and that would be over... 2.6 microseconds, so that would give us a slew rate uh, of about 2.3 volts per microsecond. I thought this 30 plus year old 2004 Mark II power amplifier performed decently on the bench. There were not a lot of specifications for it to be compared against. It did hit the 100 watts into 8 ohms at not more than 0.05% THD. It was shy of the 200 watts into 4 ohms at 0.05% THD. I think you needed to back the power down to about 190 watts into 4 ohms. The SNR requirement, it missed that a bit. And overall, its frequency response looked pretty good. Looks a little bit better into 8 ohm loads than 4 ohm loads, but overall it performed decently on the bench. I didn't really have any complaints about it. As far as when I listened to it, I hooked it up to the Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2s, and the first thing I always do is terminate the inputs and just see if there's any hum or hiss or pops or turn-ons, and there were none. I, I shouldn't say that. If I strained, I could barely hear the 60, 120 hertz hum. It was real, real low. I mean, I had to strain. But it was really, really quiet. You couldn't hear it if you were not right next to the speaker, and uh, that, that's pretty impressive because it looked a little bit noisy. Uh, when I looked at the system noise, but it's down there far enough that you're not going to even hear it. Once I finished with the noise test, I hooked up my pre-amplifier to the 2004 Mark II, and I used my JVC pre-amplifier that has an equalizer in it, and I hooked my Hi-Fi Walker 20 Pro DAP to the pre-amplifier, and I listened to a variety of music, and this guy sounded just fine. I it did everything you wanted an amplifier to do. It was very easy for me to get to 100 dB SPLs, which I, I did on uh, for brief moments. And then I backed it down to 90 dB SPLs, just kind of work the amp and see if it got warm. And this guy just runs really cool. It, you barely could tell it was even on playing loud music. But... It's a, a nice sounding amp. I thought it did everything you would want it to do with your music. And, you know, it's something I would recommend if you could find one. And, you know, they have that iconic look with the V in the case. So, you know, I'm not sure what they're selling for uh, these days. But, you know, if you, if you did find one and you wanted a, a nice power amp, I'm sure it can do a good job with most people's speakers. Uh, it certainly worked well with the Wilsons. So. It looks good, it works well, what more do you want? And if you can find one that you can afford, I guess I would uh, purchase it. So that's kind of my take on the Aragon 2004 Mark II. If you enjoyed the video, of course, thumbs up. And I always like hearing your comments and I try to reply to them. So leave them in the appropriate space. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, I hope you will consider doing that to allow the channel to grow. So once again, until next time, have a great day or night.